Given the global turmoil in financial markets, why have you chosen now to invest in an asset management company? It's a very good question. <laughs> um, our, my motto in business has always been observe the masses and do the opposite. And this, for me, really fits into that sort of idea. But I think that my fundamental principles of investment, I think, as comes out on Dragon's Den quite often, is that typically I invest in people, and I'm a great believer that businesses become successful because of the passion and the drive of people who run those businesses. And in synergy, in my opinion, is no different. You know, I've got something like over 20 different businesses that I've invested in and I would say that from all the investments I've made this particular management team is probably one of the most impressive management teams I've seen in a long time and if you believe in the people who run a business then to me that's in itself an exceptional investment opportunity Spike's track record, his background this is not a theoretical business i.e. I've got a great idea, I think it's going to work you know, this is tried and tested and Spike's raised over £5 billion in this market. So, you know, this is a business that I think has every opportunity to be one of the most successful investments I've made. So, Spike, why did you set up Insynergy, and what is different about this business? Well, having been in the industry for over 20 years, one thing that's always frustrated me and one thing I've always noticed is that there seems to be this huge gap between what investors and IFA say they actually want and what product providers and investment groups try and sell them. And it just doesn't seem right that. So I, I wanted to set up a, a fund management company that was dedicated to meeting investors' needs first and foremost. So whenever we identify an unmet need, we launch an in synergy fund that is designed to bring a solution that actually meets that need. And, and one of the interesting things is that a lot of the most exciting and proven investment opportunities actually are what I call off-market. In other words, they're not available to IFAs and their clients are only available to super wealthy individuals and big institutions. And so what we wanted to do, having identified needs, is find proven off-market solutions that meet those needs and then provide exclusive access through an outsourced model where we leave that team in, in place. We don't try and disturb them or employ them. We just provide exclusive access to them through an, through an Insynergy fund. So you're not actually taking them out of the environment that perhaps has made them successful in the past. That's right, because important. quite often you, know, you, you only end up taking half the team, you disturb them, mm -hmm. uh, they're unsettled. If you leave them where they're proven and successful and then provide access, it's a much better solution. Sure. And James, joining the Insynergy board as chairman is actually a, a big commitment. Uh, it is. What does, um, what's your role going to be within the firm and what's that going to mean for financial advisors? Um, I think first and foremost, the, the role is very much to work with the management team. I'm not coming in to run the business. My objective is we've got an exceptionally manage, a good management team in place and it's really to facilitate in terms of the strategy, the ideas, but also I think really to enforce Spike's vision. You know, and, I, and I've really bought into the fact that this is a very crowded market with very vanilla products. Mm. You know, and, and I think most of them pretty much do the same thing. And I think it's quite exciting to be part of an organisation that is innovative, that's creative, that genuinely meets the needs of the client. And it's the individual, really, you're buying yeah, into there. Absolutely. With, with, with yeah. Spike. Many investors, Spike, have lost a lot of money in the equity market. Now, why would another uh, equity fund be of interest to invest at a time when, well, sentiment's an all-time low? Well, that's a really interesting question because uh, if you look at the last 12 months or so of the credit crunch, you know, lots of investors have lost... 30, 40, 50 percent of their savings and pension fund values uh, and, and it's very natural that people don't feel good about the equity market but if you look back at the 1970s, at the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s mm -hmm. when you know markets have had similar uh, falls in capital value no matter how bad you feel at the bottom you feel a hell of a lot worse if, if you don't stay in the market when it recovers. Actually um, I think we've got some slides if we can bring those up to show those what, exactly what you're illustrating and, and, there. And so when you're, when, you're, when you're at the bottom of that market fall, mm -hmm. um, if you are a medium-term investor, the one thing that you probably can guarantee is if you, if you cash in your equities uh, and go into cash, you won't recover that capital loss. If you stay in the market, then you've got a great opportunity. And some of the smartest investors at the moment of all time are saying that there's great opportunity ahead. And, of course, sentiment always recovers after the market has, uh, has recovered. So if we accept the case then for staying in equities, why the Insynergy OD fund? Well, again, back to understanding investors' needs. Um, there seems to be this, this um, uh, huge gap again between what many investors want and, and, and what's available. And 
whilst, whilst probably the biggest identified or the most identified need that we've observed recently is that clients say, I want to preserve capital and grow it, mm. uh, uh, many, many fund managers actually uh, are in conflict with that because they're too busy trying to manage their business risk, uh, keep the investment committees happy that they work for, manage their career risk. In other words, they end up being very heavily benchmarked to the index, the peer group, trying to s stay in the safety of the herd. Um, and we wanted to find a fund manager that was free-spirited, that thought like a client, that managed money as if it was their own, where the number one priority was to preserve capital and grow it. And we found this chap called Chris Benodi, who's been genuinely what I call off-market. He's not been available to IFAs. He's only been available to ultra-high net worth and, and big institutions. And yet for many, many years, as you can see, when you look at his performance chart, I, I think we have a side for that, um, he's significantly outperformed through many different conditions, both the peer group and the index, because he's not benchmarked. And, you know, uh, quite often, in order to get better performance, people think you have to take more risk. But if you look at a risk-adjusted slide, he's taken less risk on average but achieved bigger returns. And his whole focus in preserving capital is avoiding landmines. And so take a year like 2002, mm -hmm. uh, everything and everyone is down. Crispin managed to make money by avoiding a lot of the landmines that caused the markets to fall. Uh, in big performance years like 2003, then you know, he was up there, again, outperforming, creating lots of value. So you know, if you accept that you're in the equity market, you've lost capital, your best prospect of recovery is to stay in the equity market uh, or uh, to, as a new investor to actually come in with new money looking to make money going forwards, you must be in the hands of a capable equity manager. And Chris Bernoulli uh, is tried and tested. He's proven over 20 years that boom or bust, he can be successful. And his, his interests are completely aligned with those of his investors. You've also launched a Sharia-compliant UK yep. equity fund. Why, yep. why have you done that? Well, again, back to understanding clients' needs and, and uh, unmet needs, the, there are 2 million Muslims in the UK mm. market today, and I don't know any population of 2 million people where that need or their needs are not, are not satisfied. And historically, Muslims have had to choose between satisfying their investment needs um, but, but, but investing in something that's not Sharia-compliant with Islamic law or alternatively ha having something that is Sharia-compliant but only having a handful of funds to choose from that don't necessarily meet their investment needs. So we decided to launch the first Sharia-compliant UK equity fund that provides exclusive access to a world-class fund management team that operates within impeccable Sharia standards. Great. And James, but if you're a, a, an advisor that doesn't currently advise Muslim clients, uh, what's the best way for those advisors to target the Muslim investment market? Um, let me just actually go back to one of Spike's points mm. about you know, what the markets are like at the moment. I think as an investor, one of the things that I've learned over the last 20 years of business is, of course, when the markets are high, you can make money and, and lots of people invest. Mm -hmm. And I think the question is, would people invest right now? I mean, as an individual, I'm actively buying stocks in the market today because I, I take the common sense view that says, you know, why wouldn't you buy at the bottom of the market? Because if you want to make a profit... You know, you, you're bound to make more money if you buy at the bottom than you buy at the top. Now, I recognise that you can't catch a falling knife because where is the bottom? But when you look at some of the blue chips today, I mean, they are so grossly undervalued that it actually, in some cases, doesn't make any sense. And I think, again, the principle of observe the masses and do the opposite, this has got to be the most classic environment where, of course, it's scary, of course, people have lost money, but at the end of the day, money is a commodity. You know, you've got to get the best return you can. And this is an environment, in my opinion, where the brave will succeed. I think going back to your question in terms of the IFA market and Sharia, I think one of the, the I suppose, my observations of that product is if you take the current global credit crisis, if the global economy had been based on Sharia law, we would not have a crisis Really? So Sharia law, the fundamental principles that it is very risk adverse, it would not get into the subprime market, it does not lend in the high risk arena at all. So one of the fundamental principles of that product, I think whilst I think it, it works within the kind of Islamic beliefs of Muslims, but actually as a financial product, it is very safe as, a, as an environment. So I think if, you, if you're an IFA in the market, I think it's a fantastic opportunity for that particular community which you can access because a lot of them are professionals, whether they're doctors or nurses or business people. So that in itself is, is almost a ready-made market. 
But actually, I, if I was in IFA today, I would also be offering it to the conventional market because it's about choice. It's about not having all your eggs in one basket. And I think once the IFAs really understand and appreciate the value of, of security and liquidity within that product, I think actually that there's the conventional market that also would find it attractive. Mm, excellent. And Spike, why did you choose to partner with AXA Winterthur Wealth Management? Well, for lots of reasons, really. Uh, AXA is the 15th largest company in the world, so, you know, it's they're, they're big. The size is not everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep so what, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, 15th largest company in the world, um, very financially strong, which I think is important at the moment. Uh, AXA are the best supported life company in the UK IFA market, which, again, gives us uh, probably more reach into, into IFAs than through any other channel. AXA Winterter has market leading products, they have a huge sales force with uh, you know, highly respected by the IFA market and, and, and great technical support. So they give us distribution scale. Uh, what we bring to the party is, in, is uh, innovative and exciting new investment funds, bringing off market proven solutions to the market, meeting specific needs for the first time, and they're exclusively available through Axel Winterter. Good. One question we've had here, actually, which uh, would be useful to get an answer for is, my compliance team tell me mm -hmm. that I need a three- to five-year performance track record before recommending funds to my clients. Now, how would you address that um, with reference to your new funds? Yeah. Well, it's right to say that our new funds have only just launched, but actually the track record that we should be looking at is not how long our funds have been launched from a legal perspective, but actually the track records of the managers and teams that are running the money for us and, and also, you know, not having left an old place to join us, but staying where they are because we outsource to them through our fund. And, you know, when you look at uh, Chris Melody's track record, when you look at Ian Lancaster's track record running the Shreer Fund, these guys are very proven, tried and tested over long, long periods of time with robust investment processes, and that's what we're accessing. And every in synergy fund that we bring to market will be, acc will be accessing a proven long-term track record and team. Dealing with the uh, with uh, OD and the off-market solutions, doesn't this simply increase risk to investors? If we were bringing untried, untested solutions that, that are in the off-market space to our phase, yes, but absolutely not in this case because what we're doing is we're providing exclusive access to something that is tried and tested over time that super wealthy individuals and big institutions have successfully invested in for many, many years. So it's a great opportunity for people to access something that's been previously unavailable. It's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. And the one thing that, that, that many, many IFAs have been saying to me in the last few years is that there's 100 fund groups out there, there's 3,000 funds to choose from. We don't want more choice, we want better choice. Uh, you know, coming back to what James said at the start, this is about identifying needs and then meeting them beyond conventional choice. That's good. Well, we're nearly time to wrap up, I'm afraid, gentlemen. It's been great. But just finally, James, um, you've had a great deal of interest in the company and the first two funds. What are your plans for the future? I think one of the things that I'm very conscious of is that in any market, you know, businesses change, the needs change, people's appetites change. And I think one of the commitments that I've got is to ensure that Insynergy continues its innovative approach to the market. And, you know, I'd like to see the company bringing to market at least one or two new funds every year. So track the market, understand the needs, but also look at where the opportunities are. And I don't want Insynergy to be a, st a static provider. It's got to continue to meet those needs. And already, you know, within the last couple of months, myself and Spike have spent quite a bit of time looking at one or two really unique and exciting structures of funds which are not available to anybody in the market. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can continue to, to look for best in class with the best products that are better than what's available you know, to that consumer, for me, I think we would have achieved our vision for this business. Thanks. Spike, all same question to you, really. It would be good to get a, a view from you about how things are going to look going forward and what your plans are for the future. Well, again, you know, with the market all doing the same thing with so many Me Too dull products that don't meet clients' <laughs> needs, it is a great opportunity. And, you know, the most important thing with me, uh, you know, with James is to is to continue listening to the needs of consumers, of investors, of IFAs. And as long as we do that, I don't know any industry or business that's successful that doesn't manufacture to meet customer needs. And that is what we're committed to do. Sorry, can I just say for me, if this was an investment in Dragon's Den, I'd, I'd <laughs> like to say I'm in. You're in. And you? <laughs> I'm definitely in. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's hope we're all in. <laughs> and we are all in. It's uh, time to conclude the webinar. So... Thanks very much, both of you, James you. and Spike. You, it's been great. Thanks for your insight and thoughts.